I invite you to take your Bible and turn with me to Romans chapter 1 verse 16 for the third message on this verse. Today, the sermon falls on the words to the Jew first and also to the Greek at the end of verse 16. Let me read this verse once more as we get it in context here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now before I get into that last phrase, I want to exult with you in the word, everyone. Don't miss it. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Which is unbelievably exhilarating news for those of us who come into this room carrying something that we feel will keep us from getting it. Wrong family. Wrong moral track record. Wrong tradition, wrong sexual preference, wrong ethnic connections, wrong socio-economic level, wrong political affiliation, wrong, 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 and therefore no hope for me in this religious place. And so the word lands with tremendous exhilaration on me. Everyone who believes. One thing only need keep you away from salvation. Unbelief. Nothing else needs to keep you away. You can let it keep you away. You can say, he won't take somebody like that. That's just you. That's not God. Or maybe it's the devil doing a thing, but don't let it be. Put the Word of God against it. I love that word, everyone, which means that this next phrase just kind of jars me a little bit. Everyone, to the Jew first. You can, mm, why do you add that? Where did that come from? What's this priority business? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. I think Greek there doesn't just mean the inhabitants of Greece. It's, it's, a, it's a word for Gentile. That was the language everybody spoke. That was kind of the epitome of the Gentile culture. It's everybody else besides Jews. You can tell that from the wider context of the way Paul uses it. So he's talking about most of us in this room. There may be a few Jewish people here among us. I hope so. Uh, and then he's talking about Jews and he says them first in this. And then us maybe second. I don't know. He didn't. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So here's my question. I got three questions this morning and they go fairly quickly. The first one is, what is this priority that Jews have in the power of God and salvation? And secondly, what priority don't they have? If we're going to say what priority do they have, is there any priority they don't have? I got six of the one and three of the other. And then the last question is, why do he say this? What effect on this room, this people gathered here, what effect does he want these little words, Jew first, then Greek, to have on you this morning? What are you supposed to take out of here? Is that relevant at all to your holiday weekend? So that's the plan. Let's do them. First question, what is this priority to the Jew first? Number one, Jews have priority over Gentiles as the chosen people of God historically. Genesis 12, remember, Abraham, the father of the Jews, he's chosen freely. Nehemiah 9, 7 says, God chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldees. So he just chose him. He just looked around and freely, he didn't look for a meritorious person. In fact, he was a moon worshiper, we find out in Joshua. He just chose him freely. Made him his own. 
and set a whole history in motion. Deuteronomy 14.2 The Lord has chosen you to be a people for His own possession out of all the peoples who are on the earth. Now this is really offensive. This is big time politically incorrect. He has chosen you out of all the peoples to focus some historical attention on for a long time. And lets the nations go their own way, it says in Acts 14. This is really troubling. Amos 3.2 You only have I chosen among all the families of the earth. Romans 11, 28 and 29 from the standpoint of the gospel, the Jews are enemies for your sake, but from the standpoint of election or God's choice, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers, for the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. So the Jews have a priority in history as the people whom God chose to focus his redemptive work on for a long time, a couple thousand years. And he did it freely. The Lord, listen to this, Deuteronomy 7, 7. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the other peoples. You were the fewest of all the peoples. The Lord loved you. And kept the oath which he swore to your fathers. Second, the Jews have a priority over Gentiles as the guardians of God's special revelation, the Old Testament scriptures. I get this straight out of Romans 3, 1 and 2. You can even see it there with me if you want. Romans 3, 1 and 2, Paul asked our question, what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the benefit of circumcision? And he answers his own question, verse 2. Great in every way. First of all, they were entrusted with the oracles of God. So there it is. The first thing he mentions, and that's all he mentions here, he's going to get back to it in chapter 9 and finish his list, is that they have been entrusted with the Bible, the Old Testament, the prophets, Moses, the law, the writings. He says in chapter 9, verse 4, they are Israelites to whom belong the covenants, the giving of the law, and the promises. So the second way they have priority is that God did not go sprinkling his revelation among all the peoples. He, take, he took one people and he gave them the law, he gave them the prophets, he gave them the writings, he gave them all the prophecies that were coming about Messiah. He gave his special revelation to one people and entrusted it into a book, which is now the first part of our Christian Bible. Third priority. The Jews have a priority over the Gentiles in that the Messiah himself, Jesus, came as a Jew to Jews. Romans 9, 5, continuing on in, in that list, it comes to a climax like this. From the Jews is the Christ, or the Messiah, according to the flesh, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. In other words, the pinnacle of the benefits and the privileges of being a Jew is that the Messiah, the Son of God, was born a Jew. He came to the Jews. And he came during his earthly life almost entirely to the Jews. Listen to Matthew 10, 6, where he sends out the 12, not on their last mission after the resurrection, but on their earthly mission. While he's here, he says... Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10, 6. Or Matthew 15, 24. You remember when that woman wanted help? Jesus said, verse 24 of chapter 15, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she comes back well even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table and he says for that you're saved <laughs> we're going to get to that in a minute 
But almost entirely while he's on the earth, he's saying, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Don't go here. Don't go there. And then when the work is done on Calvary and the great commission is given, it's a very different word. Go make disciples of who? All nations. Okay.